Good afternoon, Internet. Yep, Zone Kitty's here. I actually... Well, he wasn't asleep yet, but he was curled up where I was sitting. Because Zone's a spot thief. Today I wanted to talk to you about international travel. This was a recommendation. Um, I am an American. I have traveled overseas. I'm... well... I've never actually been to Canada. I have only visited two countries, as long as you're not counting the airports of layover countries as different countries. I have visited both Norway and Austria. I do not speak Norwegian. I do not speak German. I am pretty atrocious at both languages. Um, by the time that I was finished visiting Norway last, which was this past summer, you're not allowed on the table, um, I was able to understand probably about 50% of what people were saying, which is pretty good in my mind, given that I've had no formal instruction in Norwegian, and my informal instruction, well, tends to turn into a bunch of laughter when they hear me attempt to try to speak anything in Norwegian whatsoever. Anywho, um, I was asked to share my experiences with traveling abroad. Um, first off, a little background. I did not travel, I did not leave the United States until I was an adult. That's not that uncommon for Americans, but a lot of people in my class, like especially in middle school, there was a program that people were taking a part of to visit Europe for cultural reasons, basically, over spring break. I always wanted to go, but I, my family was poor, not lower middle class, poor. Needless to say, a thousand dollars for a week-long trip to Europe? Not exactly in the budget. Um, my first visit to Europe was to visit my lovely character. Um, that was, ooh, 2004. Yeah, that would have been summer of 2004. It was the first time that I went overseas. It was an interesting experience. That was the first time that I had ever left the United States. I've never visited Canada. Still haven't visited Canada, I should say. Um, the travel itself was annoying, as I would expect from any travel. It's still to date my best overseas trip, but, well, British Airways is a very nice airline. Arrived in Norway, was greeted with hugs, and then everything became very, very strange. So. The first thing, the very first thing that I noticed when I arrived in Europe was how much English people were speaking. Um, the first time over wasn't... I would have noticed sooner if it weren't for the fact that my layover was in Heathrow, thus I would expect the Brits to speak English, and I would expect foreign travelers to speak English, because that tends to, at the moment at least, it's the language that most people share when it comes to communications, international communications, things like that. Um, it was actually much more prevalent my last trip over where my layover was in Amsterdam. Um, I usually have a layover in Amsterdam. My layover was in Amsterdam. There was a group of people, um, they were natives, so they spoke Dutch. They were speaking Dutch individually to other groups. Um, they were boarded onto the plane. I noticed them while I was waiting for, to board. They boarded onto the plane, sat next to each other. They sat next to each other and immediately started speaking English because they assumed that the other was a traveler. That was my theme for the last time I visited, were people in various countries deciding to just switch to English to speak with each other rather than their own native languages, even though everybody would have understood their native language except for me. Um, I was not expecting the fact that English was so well spoken. Still, I felt incredibly shy and like a fish out of water. Not exactly the most outgoing person in the world to begin with, but I'm not exactly super shy either. I'm classified as a slight extrovert. That is to say that I do like being around people, even though I'm talking to a camera and my cats. The moment I arrived in Europe, though, all of that changed. I felt as though I needed to be very quiet. I needed to keep my head down. I needed to make sure that people didn't realize that I was speaking. This was the case both for my trips to Norway and my trip to Austria. Every time, I basically just wanted to lay low. I loved the sights. Um, when I visited Austria, it was a part of a class that I took in the university called 
castles, cathedrals, and culture. We basically spent a week during spring break going to Austria. It was a great time. I greatly enjoyed it, but I'm probably not the greatest world traveler. You know, I rely upon sleep too much for one, so the time zone difference meant that I wanted to sleep the entire time, and the rest of the group just stayed up for over 24 hours straight. I know that's a common thing to avoid jet lag. I do the inverse, which is that I sleep for 24 hours straight, basically. Works quite a bit better for me, and I don't have random bits of everything going all blurry and coming into focus randomly, like Handler would say, from questionable content. Other things that I've noticed traveling internationally. Um, prices. You would think that it'd be kind of obvious. I know that things are more expensive in Europe. Things are more expensive in a lot of places. It's the perpetual sticker shock from everything that I do if I actually translate it into my own currency. Where I'm going, holy crap, I just spent $150 on dinner. Let that sink in for a bit. $150 for dinner. It was a nice dinner. I mean, this isn't something that I would be getting for like $5 in the US or anything like that. This was dinner for two at a decent restaurant. I would not say it's super high quality. I can, it's the type of restaurant that I go to here in Madison when I eat, go out to eat. So I would expect it to cost, you know, 30 to 40 in the US. It's things like that that get me every so often. And I'm, I would not call myself cheap. I would call myself thrifty. That's not a euphemism type of thing. It's the fact that in my mind, cheap as a connotation is more of the I'm trying to make sure I don't spend money to the point where I will get an inferior product that might break because I didn't want to spend that much money. I try to cut things off at that point. That's a bit of a sidetrack. Um, other things I noticed. Um, not as much walking as I've heard. Especially when it comes to Europe, there's a lot of this image that you walk everywhere in Europe. There's a lot of walking, don't get me wrong, but I was already a walker, so that didn't really bother me. Um, my first trip to Norway, the only part that really bothered me was the elevation. I am I grew up in Florida. The, our tallest point is a landfill. Um, there's nothing in Florida above 150 feet above sea level, if I remember right, or roughly 50 meters. And here I was walking up and down mountains. Now I'm quite a bit better. Madison is not exactly flat terrain, unlike both Indiana and Florida, but yeah, that that took a lot to get used to. Um, other differences. The way people speak to each other. And admittedly, part of this is probably um, translation convention, or the idea that I'm having to translate what they're saying into English so I can think about it, which means that I'm going to lose a lot of the connotations going on. But in general, people seemed a lot more rude. Maybe it was just me, maybe it was the fact that I was a tourist, or things like that, but... Um, yes, there, when I was in Austria, there were a lot of people saying please and thank you, but they were in tourist industries. The moment I got away from anything that was specifically based off of tourism, like for instance, if I walked into a convenience store, or walked into <clears throat> the Wienerwald, um, kind of like a standard lower-end restaurant type of thing, um, the pleasantries ended. Not, I mean, it, I wasn't offended by it or anything like that. It didn't bother me. It was just something I noticed that made me go, huh, that's weird. Same thing happened in Norway for the most part. Um, pleasantries seem to be more limited. But again, I'm translating. My Norwegian is not great. My German's worse. Yeah. I think a lot of my experiences with Europe are tainted by the fact that I don't speak the respective languages of the places I'm visiting. It's unfortunate. I really wish I could speak Norwegian. I really wish that I, well, I can speak German. I'm just, I'm slightly better at speaking German than I am speaking Norwegian, even though I know less German. It's probably because Germanic languages are, or German is much more closely, closely affiliated with English than, say, Norwegian. Norwegian, there are sound effects that do not make sense. I do not know how to make those sound effects with my mouth. Other things that I noticed. Um, American central, uh, centricism. I am terrible at saying that word. 
the idea that everything's focused around America. It's a stereotype that goes around that all Americans are very focused on themselves. They believe they're, they're the center of the world and so on. I was assuming that that was not the case. I mean, I'm not exactly that narrow-minded or things like that, but there was a lot of things focused on Americans when I've been traveling abroad. Um, not just airports, but if you enjoy media of some variety, like for instance, um, at the hostel in Austria, if I turned on TV, I was looking at American television or alternately a port of an American TV show in Yes, they were in, they were either dubbed over in German, subtitled in German, or, you know, the German version of an American TV show. I remember, um, do you want, so you want to be a millionaire on TV. I remember Jeopardy on TV. Uh, if I remember right, Jeopardy was actually subtitled. I can't remember now. It's been so long. Um, American media tends to dominate other types of media. Sure, there was some local content, um, just not that much. Kind of surprising. Hmm, what else? Sex. Definitely sex. Um, what I mean by that is that it's a standard, it's a stereotype, and it's a very true stereotype that Americans are very prudish when it comes to sex. We don't advertise sex on the streets. We advertise with sex, as in you will find sexy figures advertising things, but you don't find people topless, for instance, in advertisements. You don't walk up and see a sex store on the corner that looks ex in a mall that's selling lots of other things with absolutely no difference between them. I mean, the sex stores in America tend to be dingy places covered with barbed wire off in the back where there may not be as many streetlights. You know, things like that. That was not the case in Europe, and makes sense, but... It's a difference. That's really about it. Um, a lot of my other comparisons are with the specific locales that I was visiting. I mean, when I was in Vienna, I would, or when I was in Austria, I was in Vienna specifically. So I was in a very major modern European city. Um, modern European cities are definitely different from, say, South Florida, which is more sprawl. Or Northeast Indiana, which is more farmland. No offense. It's farm. Um, when I visited Norway, I had both Oslo, which is obviously a modern European capital. It's not especially a, not an especially large city. It's, if I remember, it's actually comparable to Madison in population. But, or was it Bergen that was comparable to Madison? Now I can't remember. I'm going to have to Wikipedia this afterward, aren't I? Um... It's still not that large of a city. It's not millions or things like that. I mean, I did live in New York City for a year and a half. I also got to see, well, in, I, in Norway, I also visited Bergen, and also this tiny little place out in the middle of nowhere, um, where Kreter currently lives. Um, that's definitely farm. That's a lot more rural than I'm used to. We're talking like a half an hour drive to the nearest gas station equivalent. Um, there are not really stores in the nearby area. That little town doesn't really have a grocery store or anything like that. Uh, that's substantially more barren. I shouldn't say barren. There's definitely life around. It's a beautiful place. It's substantially less civilization-focused than what I'm used to. Uh, even Angola, with its population of a few thousand or several thousand, even Angola had multiple grocery stores. It had gas stations. It's a county seat, so that does make sense, but... The areas around it still could go to Angola or go to an interstate, or you can see civilization not that far away. And Angola is the most remote place that I've lived in. Uh, I technically lived in a smaller town in New Hampshire, but it wasn't exactly that far away from other things. Um, it's the Northeast. There's not that much space. Florida, obviously, I lived in sprawl when I lived in Florida because that's pretty much the only thing on the coastal part of Florida. Um, there's little bits that are not connected to the sprawl at the moment, or at least there used to be. I don't know. Florida keeps expanding. I don't know why, but I'm getting off track again. So, that's my experience as an American visiting Europe. It's not bad, it's not good, it's just different and kind of weird in some ways. Some things that I expect, some things that I didn't expect, some things that I expected that didn't come up. Um, 
I'm planning on trying to visit another continent soon. Um, as part of my work, I am given a sabbatical every five years, either one four-week-long sabbatical or two two-week-long sabbaticals, that I'm encouraged to visit a country that I've never visited to before. Uh, most likely, I will... I'm currently thinking New Zealand. New Zealand has a nice variety of terrains. It's not exactly super hustle and bustle because I'm not a fan of big cities. Although Oslo didn't really bother me. Uh, Madison doesn't bother me either. They're not big cities. You can hush people from Chicago and New York and South Florida. They're definitely not big cities. Um, I'm thinking about New Zealand. That and also would be the first time I'd be visiting a country that I actually speak the language. It may not be the correct dialect or anything like that, but I'm going to understand what they're saying. I'm not that unfamiliar with slangs of different countries. Uh, it'll be an interesting experience. Uh, I'm also thinking about potentially taking the two two-week sabbatical and take the second one someplace that I don't speak the language as well. Maybe a Spanish-speaking country in South America. That would be interesting. Uh, my Spanish is incredibly rusty. I mean, it's been over 10 years since I lived in Florida, after all. This was a really long video, wasn't it? I am going to go now. I am aiming to try and record something for tomorrow that's computer-based. Uh, you may not see me, but I will see you. Well, I don't actually see you at all. How does Hank Green's thing go? You will not see me, and I will not see you, but you will hear me next time. Enjoy. Enjoy.